okay so first of all let me just say that my camera setup is a little bit precarious and it's sort of in my way so I'm bound to bash into it at some point during this video so I apologize in advance if the video is a bit shaky in places but this is the the best I can manage with the the camera angle at the moment okay so let me show you what I'm going to be using um, I've got this Suminagashi ink which I got oh, several years ago and um, pretty sure I got it from Amazon I'll, I'll put a link in the description and this is what it looks like so you've got six six bottles of coloured ink so unlike um, what I would call sort of traditional marbling which uses paint this is ink which floats on the surface of the water and one of the things which has put me off trying other forms of marbling is I've I've heard all this stuff where they recommend that you treat the paper with one thing and then there's a different chemical that you put in the water so that the paint floats and it just seems a lot of palaver <laughs> before you can even get started whereas with this basically all you need is just normal tap water I'll just put that aside for a second and uh, in the box I also got this sort of instruction sheet in Japanese um, but fortunately it's in English on the other side and there's quite a few different techniques here and maybe in future I'll do some other videos like exploring the different techniques that are described in the booklet but for today I'm going to do a technique which I've used before which I learned from YouTube. I did have a quick practice earlier today and it went quite badly <laughs> but hopefully that's enough to uh, remind me of you know the, the techniques and um, I'll do a better demonstration for the video. I've got an old bed sheet down um, just in case you're concerned these are tea stains from where I tea dyed paper previously and I've laid it out on this sheet to dry so don't worry it's just tea stains and actually also underneath I've also got an old shower curtain so if any of the the water or the ink does soak through it's not going to stain the table underneath let me just show you a couple of samples of what I did previously so these are like the first ones that I did when I, when I first got the, the ink and I actually really like this one but obviously you can see I've not, um, I've not used the full, the full area, I don't like that colour combination, uh, I don't quite know what was going on with that one, I definitely don't like that colour combination. So I'm kind of more drawn to just the blue and the black. Here's a previous example of one that I made and um, this is just like a an old dictionary from my school days that I just put a hard cover onto um, so yeah so basically just greys for the uh, end papers and then it's like blue and black on the cover but it's very pale I mean I like it but I'd like to see today if I can do some slightly bolder colours Having said that you only need water, there is one other ingredient that you do need, but don't worry, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have to go out and buy it. Um, in the bottom of this glass, I've got just a little bit of dish soap, just a, just a tiny little drop of, of dish soap, and uh, you'll see what that's about shortly. And then I just put the rest of the water in here. This is an old, old roasting pan which doesn't see the oven anymore. This is one that I use either for if I'm going to do this marbling, which as I said I've only done a couple of times, or if I'm tea dyeing paper, this is what I use. And for the inks, I'm just going to use the blue and the black, and I've got this. Well, I think it's an ice cube tray. I don't even know where it came from. Um, but you could just use a, a plate or, or anything really. And I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of the ink 
into these only needs to be a few drops it goes a long way and the blue move those inks out of the way so then I've got a bit of space behind so in theory once I've printed my marble paper I can just lay it behind to, to dry um, and then I've got three brushes um, so my, my plan is I've, I've deliberately gone for three different coloured handles because when I did the little test earlier today, I got my brushes in a muddle and then, yeah. <laughs> so the, the palest one I'm going to use for the soapy water. The red one I'm going to use for the blue paint, uh, blue ink and the black one I'm going to use for the black ink. So hopefully that will help me not get my brushes in a muddle. Let's just give this soapy water a bit of a stir, get it get the bubbles going see it's not a, it's not a great deal of um not a great deal of bubbles but hopefully that will be enough so the plan is that I'm, i think on the first one i'm just going to use black and then on a second one we'll do black and blue i think that's probably going to be a sensible way to do it just one color to start with so we we'll dip the brush into the black ink and then just ever so gently just touch it to the surface of the water and what will happen is that ink will spread out on the surface of the water if i'm a little bit too aggressive with it <laughs> or if there's a little bit too much ink and that it's too heavy like that blob of ink will just sink to the bottom of the pan and that's not a problem because that won't affect the the marbling um, but it probably will just look a bit strange on the camera because you'll have like blobs on the bottom maybe one day I'll be able to do it without getting blobs of ink on the bottom of the pan but I don't think that's going to happen today so yeah so we just touch the, the ink to the water and then with the soapy water you can touch that and then what happens is like the the soapy water disperses grease it will also disperse the ink and I just thought I'm just going to explain that to start with and then I will try not to talk too much while I'm demonstrating so here we go Okay, hopefully you can see that that I've got various black splodges on the surface so far I've managed not to get any ink drop to the bottom as far as I can tell and you notice as the ink spreads it pushes the other ink blobs away so you get like a random pattern that you have virtually no control over so then we do the same thing with the soapy water and to start with, I'm just going to go in the middle of each of the black blobs. OK, so you see again that it just disperses the, the ink. So we're just going to switch back and forth between the ink and the soap. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll maybe experiment with whether I do the blobs just constantly inside each other or whether I go at the side to kind of push something aside. So that's what I'm going to do next. We'll just just watch and see <laughs> and we'll find out together what's going to happen.
and I'm quite liking that. I think I think I kind of we've got two different sort of things going on. Like this side, it looks more like it's sort of like the concentric rings, and this side, those rings have kind of morphed a little bit more. So what I'm going to try and do is just try and create a little bit of movement over this side just to get a little bit more marbly effect rather than just circles. Okay, right, I think I'm going to leave it at that and we'll take a take a print <laughs> um right okay now what paper am i going to use for this okay i've got this this is kind of just a standard sort of paper but it's 120 grams so it's a bit heavier than standard printer paper but it is that type of paper it's not like watercolor paper or multimedia or anything like that okay so let's Let's lay this down and see what happens. I'm going to just give it a little pat. You can, hopefully you can, you can see as well, like it's sort of soaking into the paper. And then we'll just scrape off the excess moisture as we're lifting it. Okay, oh, you probably can't see that, can you? In the oops, sorry, told you I'd knock it. That's our first print. So that looks really dark, and I wasn't expecting it to come out that dark. So that's that's good. I mean, that's what I said I wanted. Um, and we'll see how much that lightens as it dries. Okay, let's just get a bit of sort of scrap paper and just sort of go over the, the surface just to get off any oh look there was still quite a bit of ink still on the on the surface. We probably could have done a second print on that actually. Okay. Now it looks like there's still quite a bit of ink swirling around, but I think that is under the surface. So let's have a go with the two colours. So this time let's start with the blue. So I've got my other brush, which I'm going to use for the blue, and hopefully I will remember which one's which. When it first goes down, it spreads out so far you can barely even see it. I don't know if you've got a better or worse view of what's going on with the ink from the camera angle. Okay, let's try the, the soap and see if that then... I can't really see what's happening at the moment. I don't know if it's my lighting. Let's get some let's get some black in there and see if that helps us see what's going on. Obviously you can see the longer I hold the tip of the brush in the water, the more the ink spreads. Like if you just tap it just ever so quickly you get a tiny tiny amount of paint uh, I keep saying paint ink and then if you hold it then obviously it spreads further
it doesn't seem to be spreading very well. So the ink is struggling to spread a little bit now and I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's to do with the amount of um, soap in the water but you would think that would help it spread not not hinder it. Mm. My camera just shut off so I don't know what was missed but I'm just going to quickly just do a print of this one and see how this goes. I'm just going to use the same paper again. Wow, we've got some, uh, definitely got some more vibrant colours on there than I was expecting. Okay, let's put that down to dry. And uh, I'll come back and show you what they look like when, they, when they're fully dry. Okay, so it's now the next day and our marbled pieces are now completely dry. Um, this is the, uh, the one which was just the black and, I was going to say black and white, the black and soap. <laughs> Um, I, I especially love this little swirl here. I really like that one. And some of these dark areas are kind of a little bit too big, I think. I would have, should have put some more um, of the soapy mixture in there to kind of disperse it a little bit. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a little bit, um, I would say, muddy <laughs> on, on some of the, the edges. Um, I don't know if that's just my technique with taking it out because on this one I did actually sort of drag it on the side of the um, the pan so maybe it kind of smudged some of the ink a little bit I'm not quite sure but yeah overall I'm, I'm happy with that one and then the, the blue and black one I think the blue is a little bit brighter than I would like it's kind of, I said I wanted to do it bolder, <laughs> I've done it bolder, and now I'm like, oh, maybe it's a little too bold. But um, but yeah, overall, I think it's, it's worked anyway. Um, it's just a case of refining the technique, I think, to find a way that I really like how it looks. And I did mention uh, when I was doing these yesterday that I'd had a little go earlier in the day which had gone badly. Um, but actually now it's dry I actually quite like it and again it's quite muddied but I think this one it was more as I said I got my brushes in a muddle um, and I ended up you know sticking ink in with the soapy water and yeah it was just I did get in a little bit of a pickle with this one but on the whole like I, I like the way it's it's marbled it's just that grubby grubby look around the edges again and then after I finished yesterday after I finished filming I did actually do two more couldn't help myself <laughs> this was the first one that I did and I didn't add any blue at all this blue is just what was left over in the water from doing uh, this one and I don't know if you'll be able to see it but if you look very closely there are like minute little swirls and little pale lines in amongst the blue so when it was wet I just thought the blue was just you know solid blue and then once it's dry you can see very faint little trails and the the black all I did for this one, so it was the same technique with the ink and the soapy water, but I was literally just in the middle of the pan, black soap, black soap, black soap, and it was just the concentric rings just centered inside each other. And to a certain point, it stayed fairly round. And then obviously this happened. <laughs> 
So when I, the way I made this, if the water had been perfectly still, it should have just been circles. But then just the natural movement of the water, either from me, you know, just tapping the table or even just breathing over the surface of the water, you just get those minute movements and it just does this amazing thing. <laughs> So again, I really like this one, but it's quite grey here where it should be white. So I think I just need to work on my technique when I'm taking the pieces out. Um, maybe I need two pans, one with the water that I'm using to do the actual ink and the, the printing. And then maybe I need a second pan of clear water just to sort of wash off any excess ink which is just sitting on the surface of the paper. And then the other one which I did, I did in a very similar way, but instead of just doing one circle with the, the black and the clear, I did two. And when I started, the circles were, were here. And then as they got bigger, they sort of morphed kind of sideways. So they've ended up, you know, sort of like diagonally, whereas as they started off, side by side and this one I did add I, I did the blue to start with and I was just gonna because I because I liked how this one looked with the blue background and then just the black and white I was sort of trying to do something similar with this one but as my black and white circles were getting bigger I thought oh there's going to be hardly any blue left showing so I did do a few blue rings as well to sort of tie it tie it in together so those are my five pieces that i did yesterday and um you know mixed results i'm i'm fairly happy with them but i do feel like i need more practice but you you've seen how easy it is to actually do you know no fancy chemicals um it's literally just tap water and dish soap and then obviously the specific um, set of inks. So I've got lots of different ideas now of different things I want to try with the inks. Um, but I'm going to use some of these on a particular book project that I'm doing this week. I'm not 100% sure yet which ones I'm going to use. But I have got a little bit of a deadline on that book. So I am going to use these. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll set up a new playlist for marbling and then when I try other different techniques in future then I can just add it to that playlist. So now I need to get on and make the book and I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll wait and publish both the videos at the same time so that I can, you know, from this one, if you want to see the finished book I will link to the book binding video and if people have watched the bookbinding video and they want to see how I've created these papers, then I can link back to this video. So if you're interested in the, the book, have a, have a look out in the description for a, for a link to that video. OK, thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you decide that you want to give this a go or if you've already tried it, if you've come across any other simple marbling techniques that don't involve lots of extra chemicals, then please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. OK, thank you. See you soon.